So there's a software I've been using on Linux and Mac, iPad, Windows, VMs, my Android phone. And yeah, there's stuff like Nextcloud where you can self-host it yourself, see file and whatnot. But I've always wanted a good alternative to Dropbox. And I wanted something that works for me and that works across all platforms and just works where I don't have to worry. So I found pCloud and I'm going to share it with you my uh, in-depth review about some of the things that made me weary at first, made me think maybe I shouldn't use pCloud because they have lifetime plans <clears throat> and that just made me feel a little uncomfortable. So I've been using them for about five months now and I've had zero issues. In fact, I've been really impressed with the service and what made me actually do the monthly plan to try it out was that big uh, streamers from long ago that are tech people like Twit, uh, they use it. And I was just really surprised by that. And honestly, out of all the ones on Linux, I kind of like how it works too. So without too much further to go, let's go ahead and jump on in. So this brand new VM I have set up, I want to go ahead and download and install. Goes to Linux. Right here, you'll download the 64 bit version. If you need 32 bit, you can go here. It is an app image. So while it says Ubuntu, Fedora, and Debian, you can install it on any distro that supports it. So let's go ahead. I don't want to run it in my downloads folder here. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the file. Come here. I like to make a folder called apps in my home directory for when I have stuff like this. Go ahead and paste. And we need to make sure the permissions are correct. So let's go ahead and check the permissions. Get executable. And let's execute it. Give it a minute here. And it's this simple. So let's go ahead and sign in. using my handy dandy password manager because who remembers passwords anymore, right? In fact, you should always be using a password manager. If you don't use a password manager, I highly suggest it. I'll probably do a video covering all the different ones. And two-factor authentication, as everyone should also do if your site allows it or app allows it. Let's give it a second for the to roll over here and I'm gonna say it will last for 30 days and one of the things you'll notice is right away it pops up and everything is available immediately now the reason this is is because it mounts as a fuser mount versus as mounting as a direct uh, syncing tool like Dropbox or Nextcloud does this is like a direct mount as a drive so you can access the files right away. So what's cool about that is I can come in here, I can pull up my Minecraft skin, and as you see right here it talks about the encrypt your files. Um, this is their built-in encryption tool, I'll get to that in a moment, but let's go ahead and go through the app here. So first you have your main controls. You can see that I'm using 94 out of 44 gig of my 500 gigs for for free. You have the sync, which I highly recommend for anything that you want to keep local on your machine, but have it also backed up. It's really simple. I'll go over that in a moment. And then you have shares where you can share people, uh, share people a folder or links. What's really cool is they have branded links, so I'll go into that as well. And we have file requests where you can request a file from somebody. The crypto, as I was talking about before, uh, I've tested it, I've used it. It's pretty cool. If you want to have the access to decrypt the files on any phone or whatever, uh, a mobile app or an iPad, you'll need to go this route. And the reason you'll need to go this route is because the way it works is it's in the app yes they uh go into it pretty well here if i go to their website 
they claim a lot of stuff the zero knowledge zero privacy they they have a report where um there was an award several people tried to hack it for 180 days no one was able to break in from berkeley boston mit and 613 other organizations um that said use it at your own risk i would still recommend what i've done is create a vault with cryptomator i'll make another video on that in the future but it's an open source tool that you can use there's mobile apps and also desktop apps for every platform fully cross-platform and you can actually create encrypted folders on your machine it works just like the um encryption built into kde the kde vaults works very similar in fact uh, uses similar encryption technologies and that way you can then keep all the files locally encrypted and then use the sync feature to sync that folder up and that's probably the best way i'd suggest for handling uh, encryption that way you can audit the source or feel a little bit better knowing that it's completely open source here you can't really see the source code of it it's not open source yet it is on the client side but it is a closed source tool but if you want to use it it's $3.99 a month or as you see at the top here you can pay uh, $125 for the lifetime you see these discounts these discounts run almost year year long I've, I haven't seen the price really go up and then an annual or $3.99 per month. Your choice, if you want to go this route, I recommend using an external encryption utility. So whoop, going back into the app here, we have your settings. You can set an upload speed limit and a download speed limit. And it also supports peer-to-peer. -peer, so if you have two machines on the same network, it can start syncing the files from the other machines on your network. Really great, and it does work. I've tested it. And this is where we come in where I was talking about how it's using a fuse mount. Well, you want to set a cache of how much stuff is cached locally. That way it can pull down stuff quicker. Or like when you're in a folder or something, it's going to cache the items when you're in that folder and so forth. This is where you can configure those settings. And then again, we don't have crypto active, so that's not going to show up here. And then about, uh, it is an app image as it states and if you haven't noticed this is not a native app it is an electron app but i don't really see a problem with that because it works really well so let's go ahead and jump into syncs so so next you want to add a sync syncs are allowing you to sync a folder as i was talking earlier uh very simple we we'll just go to add to sync we're going to choose the local path for that folder so I want to sync my games folder, so I'm going to make a folder called games here. Okay. And then I'm going to choose my games folder. Click okay. And I'm going to add sync. And so now it's going to start syncing. You'll see down here the icon has changed to a syncing icon. It's not just your regular uh, static check mark showing that everything is in sync. So as you see, it's pulling down really fast, and that's probably because it's using the LAN sync. But even if not, uh, the servers in the United States are in Dallas, Texas, and the servers in Europe are in Luxembourg. Just to give you some information on that. Uh, a couple other things to note. Um, they have been around since 2013, so they have been around a good bit so far, and they haven't gone anywhere. So I, I feel pretty good about trusting them. Uh, so that's the share. As I start syncing, we can go ahead and take a look. I have a home folder here. Does add that there, but here's my games. And as you see, it starts pulling it down. So next we'll go ahead and talk about shares. Now you can invite people to a folder, other users, and they have what they call is fair share so the way sharing works is with the fair share let's say i'm going to share a folder with you that has 20 gigabytes of files from my account well that shouldn't count against you so when a fair the way a fair share works is when i share my 20 gig folder with you or whoever i want to share it with you don't it, you know like with dropbox or the other ones it doesn't then take up 20 gigabytes in your account you are using my storage while the folder is shared with you because they're hosted from my account. 
So it doesn't impact the people you're sharing with. They're just able to view them from your folder until you take away that permission. Um, also, you have links. So you can share files and folders. So I'm going to use the web interface to do that. Because on Linux, it doesn't behave quite the same from the desktop just because you lack the ability to integrate because there's so many different file managers, Dolphin, Files, Nautilus, Nemo, I could go on, Thunar. <laughs> so the way we handle this here is we'll just log into the web interface. And I want to log into the web interface anyways because you can customize link shares. So I'm going to go into my account. I just want to go to my account, please. Okay. There we go. And now we're inserting the account. Let's just go to uh, my quick share folder. And one of the videos I took from the nonstop world furry convention in Minecraft. I want to share it. I can just click the share link. Now there's a couple options here. You have password protection, expiration date, so you can make your link expire after a while, and then you have branding. And that's the part that's pretty cool. So I actually shared these before, but I didn't want to share them forever, so I just went in here, I set the expiration date, and I stated the date and time I wanted it to stop being shared. And that works with the link, and it'll automatically stop sharing at that point. Now the branding, this is the part that's pretty cool. So you can change the branding. So like mine says hack 13 share, just another Fox online. And then you have this lovely section here where you can download the video. It shows a preview. They can reshare it or download it depending on your sharing permissions. You can add a cover image. You can add a title image, which just sits in the top here. And then you can just save it and then all your, it's branded. So you can have the custom branding. I just think that's kind of cool. So it can give your personal little flair on it as well. Something I think is pretty nice. So that's pretty much the gist of it. Um, if you are accessing through a web browser, there are some cool things. Like you can listen to the music straight through the browser. Um, even on the app, it's kind of nice. It has a built-in kind of music player. It's not the best. It's not like your actual music player, but you could use the sync function on your phone or your um, tablet device if you want to sync your music that way. That said, let's jump into the pricing because their pricing is a little bit interesting. So on the pricing page, I'm going to come down here and quickly jump to the monthly so we can see the monthly. This is what I'm on right now. 500 gigabytes is way more than enough for me, and I've been testing it, so I've been doing $4.99 a month. Then you have $9.99 a month for two terabytes. These are all in USD, by the way. $47.88 if you want to do annual for $500. $95.88 if you want to do annual for two terabytes. And then this is the lifetime. The lifetime is you pay once, and then you get it for 99 years. Now I looked that up because I'm like, what is lifetime? There's no way it's lifetime. And what do you do if all those files and somebody dies? So I came in here, what is lifetime? Lifetime is an official pCloud account where you provide lifetime use of your premium cloud storage to a single one-time payment. How does lifetime refer to? It refers to 99 years or the lifetime of the account holder, whichever is shorter. So when you die, um, or their inactivity tool, which it will contact you. And, but when you're on the paid one, it usually doesn't contact you until it gets really close. So 99 years, there you go. So you're, you're getting a good amount of storage, but the other thing is you do not get a discount if you go with the 500 gigabyte lifetime account and then upgrade to the two terabytes. So if you are going to go lifetime account, I suggest buying the two terabyte so you can grow into it. Otherwise, just get the 500 gigabyte uh, annual or two terabyte annual if you want to just test it out on the monthly like I've been doing. 
But if you're doing lifetime, it really behooves you to get the two terabyte because you're probably going to run out of five gig, 500 gigabytes within a quote unquote lifetime. So that's pretty much the gist of it. It works really well. Yes, it is an Electron app, but as you see, we're already done syncing. So games folder is fully updated. Super awesome. Super great. I just think it was a really good share, something I wanted to share with other people because as somebody who wants to have my files in a place that's not managed by me and because sometimes I do an oopsie with a server and yes, I have tons of backups upon backups, but sometimes you want to pay for a service that just works. Sometimes you want a service that is like, here's my alternative solution for when I am just not confident or don't want to spend the headache if my server does crash or something i can just be like here is a link to the file and share it with somebody or it's a reliable sync that i know if i drop my pictures or something in there it'll take care of it speaking of which let me show that real quick if you have mobile devices tablets and phones there is a folder called omac upload and the name of your device and the photos will show up there so you have my iPad, which is called Kitsum Pad, and then my Samsung devices, and they automatically upload based off the phone or device's name. So that works there too. So you, all your pictures are backed up automatically. That's pretty much all I wanted to show. There are a couple other features with it that I'll let you find out for yourself, such as account backups, where you can link it to your OneDrive, Google Drive, and Facebook and whatnot, and it'll back up your files and pictures from those locations as well. Use that at your own risk because you're linking one account to another account and granting it permissions and access to your other accounts. I haven't had an issue with the ones that I have done with it, but they don't contain anything critical or important. But if you are linking any website to another account on another service, always be wary of that and what permissions it asks. But there you go. That is pCloud. I'll have a link in the description. Uh, if you sign up with my link that I'll have in the description, I do get a $5 credit to my account if you end up purchasing it for any period of time. Um, so that is full transparency. Or you can just go to pcloud.com and sign up for free and don't give me a kickback. It's cool. Uh, just being transparent and hope you enjoy. Thank you for watching and I look forward to talking to you again soon.